Hey folks, you're watching Fishing Lake Country. Thank you all for subbing. Guys, thank you for hitting that like button. Today, I'm going to show you how to tie, tie the famous hot dog jig. I had a lot of y'all guys ask me about it. It's easy to tie. You can tie it at home. You don't need but a few things. You probably got everything you need, really. You can work it out and get it done, guys. The hot dog jig. Let's tie it up. Okay, guys. If you go tie the hot dog jig, if you go tie it for a bass, you'd want to use a big hook like this. This is an eighth ounce. This is a sixteenth with a smaller hook on it. And you could use this for bass too. It doesn't matter if you want to tie a smaller jig. Okay? So you pick, pick what you want to do. Alright? And I go down to a one thirty second. And that's probably as long as you want to go because the plastic that you put on there has buoyancy. Now I'm going to take these cutters, those little flat nose cutters, and see what I've done. I cut behind the head, I cut beside the head. Now you can use a pair of fingernail clippers, like toe clippers. Once you use them for this, that does them in, okay? I know people I, I, that use those. I've heard people talking about that. I've tried it myself. I didn't, I, they done fine. I just like these better. I went to Home Depot, bought me a pair of these. I had a pair of these big ones anyway that I use for stuff. They're good to pull nails and stuff out with. Because y'all know I do home improvements, all right? There you go. Now. When I put this in here, guys, you want to put the hook in there like that so it don't stick you. If you leave it stick out like that, it can get you. <laughs> You're working around and it's hitting your fingers. Done it too many times. Okay? Now, next, guys, we want to put a body on. I'm going to use red thread. You can use any color. This is fly tying thread I ordered from uh, Barlow's Tackle or I bought it at Bass Pro Shop. That's two places I have bought my stuff, guys. All right. I got to get this jig a little tighter. Make sure your jig's tight. Now, guys, you don't have to have a vice. Let me, let me say something about that while, I, while I'm doing this, guys. Thank you. This thing on. All right, Dennis. Dennis got to get it locked down tight. You don't have to have a vise, okay? And I do that little tie right there. See what I've done? I just wrapped the line around itself just to make sure i got it tight on there. Now, we're going to glue this, too, so it don't have to be perfect, all right? You could use a pair of vise grips or something. If you got an anvil, you could use an anvil. A lot of people all have little anvils. Just something to hold your hook. Like I say, you can use a pair of vice grips and strap that to something. I mean, you could come up with something. But look, you can buy this a vice and a whole kit at Bass Pro Shops. Well, I bought this one for like $40. You get everything you need. You get all the tools, all the tools for $40. Now, I know some of you are on a budget, and some of you are young folks, you don't have $40. You can buy a vice for like $10 or $12, the cheapest one you can buy. And you wouldn't have to have this bobbin. But it's nice, isn't it? That you can wrap it right here and you know, you could do it, but you could do this by hand, okay? You could use thread from Walmart. I've got some thread from Walmart that I use. Now, all right, this is bucktail. I'm gonna show you some things we can use to tie the bodies. This is bucktail. I use it a lot and I got it in a lot of colors. Probably 15. You can use feathers. Alright, I ain't going to get in all ways you can use those, but y'all hear me saying I got hybrids, I'll put a piece of bucktail on and I'll put a feather on each side like that, just to give it a different look. The feathers move a little different in the water, okay? This is Malibu, you can use that. This is actually turkey feathers, guys. That's all that is. You can use that and it comes in many, many colors. Like I said, I got all that stuff at Bass Pro Shop. Alright, this is craft fur. Had it in the bag. This is craft fur, isn't it neat? And it comes in a lot of colors too. Now, uh, what you can do on the craft fur, let me get a piece of this craft fur off here. You just take and get your piece like this off there, guys, and you, and you whack it. Whack it like that, all right? And you're going to use this part of it. This end and the buck hairs, bucktail is the same way, guys. This end's useless. That's your waist end, all right? Now, you want to measure it on here. You want this to see how fine it gets at the end? That's what you want. You want that fine, that fine hair on the end. See, I'm going to cut all that off right there and throw it away. That's going to go in my trash pile right here. All right? Now, I'm going to hold this down here and I'm going to do the right side. I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to put it loosely and I'm going to tie it. All right? Now, I'm not going to get wild with it because I'm going to come back and put a piece on the other side. So, I'm going to wipe me another piece of this off, guys. I'm going to lay it down here. You don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. I've got this camera set up. This is kind of hard for me to do. Alright, trying to do this and show y'all what to do too. This is very easy guys. 
All right, now same thing. I'm gonna come back here and measure it. I want it about that long. I'm gonna cut the excess off. The parts you cut off is just no good. And you do the same thing with buck hair. Uh, I need, need to cut this a little bit more. Didn't do a very good job. Measure. All right, I'm gonna put that on this side. Get it where I want it. One loose wrap, make sure I get it where I want it here. And we'll wrap it down. Don't worry about the unevenness up here. All that don't make any difference, guys. That's all, that's, that's all in looks. It doesn't make any difference. You can pretty it up and get done. Now, I'm gonna do something I don't do all the time. If I want to add a piece of bucktail, or if I want to add a piece of gray, and I do this a lot of times, so I'm, I'm going to show you this right now. Let's flip it over. Now, y'all see the jigs I showed y'all? Like, this looks like a minnow because I put gray on the top. I'll put a strip of black or a strip of olive. That's what I'll do is I'll take a little piece of bucktail like this. I'll give me this little pinch. All right. Let me lay this over here out of the way. Get it off my table. I'm running out of room on my table, guys. I'll take the bucktail. I'm doing the same way. I'm going to measure. I'm going to cut it right there. You don't want him too long, guys. You want the, you want this stuff to stick off past your hook. People say a half inch. I do about an inch, inch, inch and a quarter. Tie a few. Look, look at them in the water. Try them, and, and you, you're gonna make a decision. After you tie a few, you're gonna say, oh, I don't want that as long. All right, I'm gonna put that right there. I still need to cut just a touch off of it. All right. See what I'm saying about that hook? It's hard to work that way, guys, because the hook will get you. That hook will get you. But I want this on this side. Now, if that was black or gray or olive, I'd make my minnow look. Now, again, here we go. Now, what else do I do to make it look pretty? Let me lay this out of the way on my other table over here. Now, I want to give us some flash. This is called flash a boo. See it here? I've got a lot of colors, guys, maybe six or eight. I got gold, silver, the chartreuse. All right, this has this a light purple in it. So if, since I'm tying this in white, let's take uh, let's take this uh, this is UVA color and a little bit of purple in it. I just take one little strand over here. Okay, what I usually do is I double it like this. All right, I double the strand. Now, guys, if you're a fly time person and watch me, please don't laugh. Here's how I do it. I pull that around, and I got two pieces on each side. Now it's tied there. See how I done that? I see guys on YouTube and they take and hook it to their line and do that. I don't do it that way. This is how I do it. That's how I do it, guys. And I cut that double. See? Now I got four strands of that in there. Because that to me that is so much easier. And I got two strands on each side. And I'm gonna lay this out of the way. Alright. I got a table, guys, another part of my my work area here that I that I do this at. I got it set up on the work area. Alright. I'm cutting off some of them little wild hairs. Now you can you can pull those down if you take and pull your thread up against the ball head like that. See, you can pull some of those down, guys, and make it look a little better. But look, the, I promise you something right now: the crappy don't care, and the bass don't care. If you got a hair sticking out right like there, they don't care. All right. What I done now was I took it down further, got it ready for the plastic. Okay. Now what am I gonna do next? I'm gonna whip it. Yeah, that's right. Y'all, y'all heard that song? Whip it now. And right here it is. This is a whip it tool. Again, you don't have to have this. If you look on YouTube, as people show you how to hand tie it, you can wrap this around your fingers and flop it on there. Or you could add your glue right now and just hold it tight. Come back in two or three minutes and go on. You can just glue that right if you want to. But all right, this is the easiest way. My bobbin's a little tight. All right. I got got my. Got my jig a little loose. Get that on top of that. A little, there you go. A little loose. I got barely got it in here, guys. All right, now I got it. Sometimes this is pulling really hard. Now, once I do that, now let me show you how I've done it again. You hook that on here, then you hook it back there, and I watch. I'm gonna make a triangle. See the triangle? And then you take your triangle over, triangle over. Oh man. All right. Then it's got, then it's messed up. <laughs> you know what it done? You know where you, you ever have a, you got a hook that's open right there? You know what I'm saying? Some of these hooks, the eyes got a little opening on the cot on that. All right, you make a triangle, watch it, triangle over, triangle over, that's, do it about five times. Now, being I'm gonna glue this, I just done it a couple times, because I'm gonna show you why next. All right, cut that off. Here's why. 
Next, we'll get a piece of body. All right. Use any kind of rubber worm you want to use. This is smoked silver flake. Y'all can see this is a smoke, real light smoke. Watermelon red. You could use green pumpkin, pumpkin seed. I've done some with pumpkin seed. What you want to do is measure your body, how much you need, and whack your piece off. All right. I whacked it off down there on, on the base. So make sure it's the right length. Now I'm going to hold this up here so y'all can see what I'm going to do. And guys, I appreciate y'all asking me how to do this. And I told y'all we'll get to it. Uh, I cut it almost in two. Alright? Didn't do as good a job as I usually do. Try and do it in there. But you want to cut it half in two. So try to stay in the middle. If you get off a little bit, it's nothing to cry about. The gel. I like the gel, guys. The gel seems to work better than anything I've used. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little gel right here. All right. Now I'm going to open my little plastic piece up that I cut right here. Find the opening. There it is, Dennis. All right. And I'm going to put just a little shot in the inside of there at the bottom. I just put a drip. Then I'm going to wipe my glue off my lid right there. I got a rag I use to wipe it off because we don't. <laughs> then I'm just going to wrap it around here. Wrap it around my, around my hook. This is why I said I'm going to push it up tight as I can and I'm going to squeeze it. Here we go. Alright, I'm going to sit there and hold it shut. And uh, guys, you give it a few seconds like that, it's going to hold. Also, it's gluing those threads, see, that we tied with the whipping tool. I glued it by putting that super glue on there. Bam, it's going to hold that too. There you go. You got a hot dog jig. Again, so you don't need a bunch of equipment, guys. You need a knife, you need something to hold your hook. And you need a way to put your line around there. And like I say, you can. Uh, there's a guy on, there on YouTube that shows how to make these. I bought them. They're not that expensive. I got two of them, two or three of them. Now I can switch colors. Okay, guys. We got some jigs tied in. All right. We use white tail, of course. You can see, see, see the flash of everywhere in there? And that smoke body. Now, let me add something real fast, guys. Craft fur, bucktail. These are probably the best two, the easiest to work with. All right. You can make a variety of jigs that come in a lot of colors. Personally, for, for, if you're tying them for bass, you're not going to be in a white tail or chartreuse. And crappy the same way. I like white chartreuse. You notice most of my jigs are that way. White chartreuse is hard to beat for tail. Okay? Now, on the hot dog jig, add you some flash, whatever you want. Add gold. I use gold and chartreuse. If I'm tying something for cloudy days, I use, I use the uh, flash and boot, I'll use chartreuse. And I'll use gold. Now I tie some up for clear days and clear water, I'll use silver on this UVA color for flash, okay? And then if you stay to smoke, white, pearl, for clear water, then if you want to tie some jigs for a little when the water's got a little stain to it or on a cloudy day when it's spitting rain or something, you could add a different color body. You could go to watermelon. You could go to pumpkin seed. Yeah, it's unlimited, guys. Just dig around your boat, see what kind of rubber worms you have left over. <laughs> Alright guys, hope that helps you. My name is Dennis. This is Fishing Lake Country, guys. People asked me about doing this, so I thought I would share it with you. It's a good way to tie up your own base. And it's, guys, it's a lot of fun catching fish from something that you made. When you make this jig and you go out and you start catching some bass or crappy on it, you'll go like, wow, I made that. And it's a lot cheaper. I've seen online uh, some of these guys that are selling jigs. Go online and look how much they're getting for them, guys. They're getting an area of $2 a piece for them. So, if you figure at $2 a piece, you could buy a couple of these pieces of equipment probably. Guys, you could get started for $30. If you go to Bass Pro Shop, shop spend $30, $35. You could buy enough to tie, tie up a bunch of jigs. The biggest expense to me is buying jig kits. Like, you know, I go through a lot of those. So, I go to Walmart, I go back and buy like two or three packs. I tie those up. Next time I'm in town, I buy two or three more packs. It's probably cheaper to buy by the hundred. Which, uh, I never do. I just buy Walmart. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. My name is Dennis. See you next time on Fishing Lake Country.